What if I told you there's one simple way to improve your lighting and as a result, your cinematography? Better yet, it's not a fancy new light or the latest in camera sensor technology and anybody can do it regardless of skill level. So what is this big secret? It has to do with changing your... Lighting a scene is an interesting challenge. We're tasked with taking a three-dimensional world, capturing it with our cameras, and projecting it onto a two-dimensional screen. This is where the challenge begins. How do we give life to a flat image and make it appear three-dimensional again? The answer is simple. It just takes a small shift in your mindset when it comes to your approach. Don't think about illuminating, or in other words, adding brightness to your image. Instead, think about using light to shape and add dimension to your image. Whether that's pulling your subject from the background or adding interesting pockets of light and contrast to a space. This is important because with today's camera sensors, illumination is no longer an issue. For example, Sony's are praised for being able to see in the dark with impressively low noise, which is incredible, it truly is. But that alone won't produce an interesting image. We are about to break down a real world example. But first, please do me a favor and like this video. It helps tremendously with getting this information out to more filmmakers like yourself so we can all improve our craft. Thank you so much in advance and enjoy the rest of the video. Here we have a simple interview setup in a relatively challenging space. Challenging because it's a garage completely enveloped in ambient light. The walls are white, which is bouncing light and filling shadows everywhere. This creates a flat image without much dimension or contrast on our subject. This image isn't bad and there's plenty of ambient light to work with, but we want to take this image from good to great. Without any artificial lighting, the only ambient light hitting our subject is this gentle edge on camera left, which is coming from this window in the background. For this setup, I wanted to keep the window in frame as it'll be the motivation for our key light. Before we start building this image, comment below what your lighting setup would be. Then come back and compare your approach to the one that I decided to take and let's chat about it. I'll also list all the gear that I used in the description so you don't have to keep track of it yourself. For our key light or our main light source, I'm using an Aperture 300X with a Light Dome 2 in grid. I'm also using the hotspot reducing fabric internally and the 2.5 stop diffusion fabric. This will give us a soft quality of light, which is controlled and free of hotspots. Next, I want to pull our subject away from the background and add to this edge light we're getting from the window. To do that, I use an Amaran T4C, secured it with a Cardellini clamp, then boomed it over top of and slightly behind me. Ideally, I would have used a grid in this situation, but I didn't have one at the time, but I do now and it's pretty sweet. Once that was set, I wanted to add more shadows to my face on camera right to increase the contrast. I took a Matthews 4x floppy and walked it in as close as possible without being in frame. And you can see the difference it made in this side-by-side -side comparison. But I wasn't satisfied. And you can see it written all over my face. The shadows weren't wrapping around my face and head nearly enough. To fix this, I readjusted the floppy by booming it overhead and letting it flop down to the side. Doing this, cut how much ambient light was bouncing off of the ceiling, as well as cut back the T4C while still creating shadows on the left side of my face or camera right. Then it was time to tackle the background. Typically, I like to shape the background prior to lighting a subject. This is because you can more easily motivate the light on your talent and build out from there. However, in this situation, I knew I was going to motivate the window and already had a plan for my background. So shaping the subject took priority. To start, I took an Aperture 300D and attached a snoot to really control the light's direction. If you are unfamiliar with the snoot, think of it like a small tunnel for your light to go through. I then tilted the 300D down, raised it up as tall as I could, and pointed it at the edge of the blinds. This gave me an interesting pattern on the back wall, which was a happy accident. 
it still wasn't interesting enough and you can tell from my face once again, so I decided to implement one of my favorite techniques, that being a gaffer slash. A gaffer slash is a single cut of light, typically in the background, that usually has sharp edges. You'll see this technique used a lot because it's a simple yet effective way to instantly bring life to your background. For my gaffer slash, I raised a 2x3 flag on a C-stand and cut my light almost in half. The flag was positioned about 4-5 to five feet away from the light to get a more defined edge. This gave me a final look I was really happy with and this is the result. Looking back on what we started with, you can really see how layering and controlling your light can transform your image from flat and two-dimensional to something that has more life, depth, and visual interest. All this by simply taking a different approach. There's no doubt in my mind, if you change your mindset from using light as a form of illumination to one that shapes and adds dimension, your cinematography will benefit greatly and taking your images from good to great will be that much easier. I really appreciate you spending some time with me today and I'll see you again very soon. And of course, right when I hit record, my neighbor decides to cut their grass. I love it. I love it. Here for it.